Hello, and Happy New Year. I'm Kevin Porter, your host for this early morning special event. It is now 12 o'clock midnight Eastern Standard Time on the 1st of January 2021, and a beloved staple of American literature has just entered the public domain. What you're about to witness is the premiere reading for the first new adaptation of the novel to be released since the historic crossing of that threshold. Stage artists of Yakima are pleased to present F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby and a new dramatization for the stage by Kevin R.M. Richardson of Chicago, Illinois. Before we begin, allow me to introduce the artists who've come together to bring this performance to you. In the role of everyman, Nick Carraway, we have Rick Brunstetter. Daisy Buchanan is played by Whitney Pickering, and her husband, Tom Buchanan, is Aaron Seibel. Jordan Baker will be played by Sarah McKay. And in the title role of Gatsby, I give you Richard Harlman. Finally, our musical accompanist is our longtime vizier, Seattle's Melina Carew. Melina, are you there? Hello, this is Melina. I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear. All set? I'm ready when you are. Excellent. If you'll get started with a little mood music, I'll invite those watching at home to pour yourself a glass of bathtub gin and settle in to enjoy stage artist of Yakima's reading of The Great Gatsby. It is the first Saturday evening of December, 1920, and we are in the parlor of a modest bungalow on Long Island, New York. The occupant, a quietly gentle young man in his late 20s, is in the midst of decorating a smallish and rather shabby Christmas tree. Peace on earth, goodwill to men, da da. Gracious king, the world is sown in this place. To hear the angels. His casual song of Yuletide merriment is interrupted by a knock at the front door, which he goes to answer, admitting a well-dressed but boisterous man about his own age with a paper bundle under his arm. Nick! How the hell are you, old buddy? <sighs> fine, Tom. Just fine. Very well. Welcome to Long Island. Do you miss Louisville yet? No time for that. I still can't believe I'm here in New York. Well, I brought you a little housewarming present. Where's uh, some glasses? Over here. What is it? You know what it is. Whiskey. Uh, Tom unwraps the bundle and starts pouring, commandeering the sofa table as a makeshift sideboard. Whiskey. Hooch! Tom. We're in Prohibition. So what? I've got a guy. I'm Tom Buchanan, right? Last I heard. So eat, drink, and be merry. Tom presses a glass of bootleg liquor into his hand, and they drink. Mm. Where's Daisy? Uh, she's around. Uh, she saw a girlfriend of hers outside and from that wild party next door. It's been like that just about every night since I came. You ought to go over and check it out. I don't know them. It's their party. So make some friends, for God's sakes. I don't think it's my kind of crowd. You, you know what your problem is, Nick? 
You know, I'll tell you what it is. I'll, I'll tell you. It's the same thing as it was in school. You're never any fun. You've always been enough fun for everybody, Tom. You got that right, boy. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been, Tom? You know, you and Daisy. Yeah, we're great. Fantastic. Uh, 1920 has been a good year. A damn good year, actually. Yeah. Yeah, Daisy says you're going to do some damn thing out here. Uh, I'm studying to be a bondsman. Bonds? Yeah, that's right. Everyone says that New York is the place to learn it. Is that so? I guess it's going to be the next big thing. Well, I've never gone for bonds. Mm. Haven't you? Hell no. There's no return on it. I keep my money in the stock market. The stock market, huh? Uh, wait and see, Nick. Ten years from now, 1930, I'll retire early on what I have in the stock market. See if I don't. Two young ladies burst in from the cold. The first, a stylish beauty, rushes into Nick's arms in a burst of vivacious, near-manic energy. Nick! Nick! I'm just paralyzed with happiness. Daisy, hello! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, Daisy. The other girl, a sultry personality decked out in a flipper's jewel-laden evening wear and without her coat, snags the glass Tom was holding out to Daisy. Thanks, Tom. I believe I will. Somebody introduce me. Miss Baker, my cousin, Nick Carraway. And he was Tom's classmate in Yale. How do you do, Mr. Carraway? He's one of my dearest girlfriends. Jordan and I have been friends for, oh, a few years now. Oh, you're Jordan Baker, the lady golfer. Guilty. There is. You should talk. You know, I, I thought you looked familiar, Miss Baker. I've seen you in the paper many times. Jordan's our very own celebrity. Oh no, Daisy. Oh my, a real celebrity. Well, I suppose so. Jordan, I've changed my mind. Let me try your jeep. Don't you want your own? No, I don't, Tom. We don't all need to be completely blotto every moment of every day like you. You don't mind if I have a drink of yours, do you, Jordan? Go right ahead. Two girls, one cup. Jordan hands over her glass, and Daisy takes a few quick sips. Christ, that's good. That's my limit, though. That's absolutely all I get tonight. Don't let me have any more. Like you didn't get started at 10 a.m. Jordan, meanwhile, has turned her attention back to Nick. I'm sorry, Nick Carraway, is that right? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm very glad to meet you, Miss Baker. Please, Jordan. Miss Baker is my old maid aunt. I'll arrange a match between the two of you, sort of fling you together. I'll lock you up in linen closets and push you out of the sea in one of those paddle boats shaped like a swan. All of that sort of thing. Nick is mortified, but Jordan laughs off Daisy's thoughtless meddling with dry bemusement. I don't believe I'm in the market for a match, Daisy. Well, never say never. Just ask Sally back in Louisville where Nick and I grew up. Or just about any girl who's met Nick. Why? What would they tell me? Oh, you'd be surprised. He was so quiet and shy. Nobody understood why Sally loved him. All the other girls passed him by. Everyone wanted to. Yes, I do. 
Don't believe everything you hear, Miss Baker. I rarely do. But on second thought, maybe I should start. Nick, you have a Christmas tree. She sinks to the floor to look through the small box of ornaments, yet to be added to the tree. Just a small one. I'll say it is. Short and skinny. I hope your other tree is a little more impressive. If you get my drift, you get my drift, Nick. I get your drift, Tom. You should see mine at home. Ten solid feet of real scotch pine. Silver and gold, real candles, none of these cheap electric lights. Don't be like that, Tom. This is a lovely Christmas tree, Nick. It's, well, some of the decorations are darling. Nick and Jordan join Daisy on the floor, enjoying the ornaments. Oh, I know this one anywhere. It's Grandma Farrell's, isn't it? It is. Most of them are. I know this one, too. And this one. Well, like you said, most of them are Grandma Farrell's. Oh, who cares? I care, Tom. These are special to me. Like little, delicate glass memories of Christmas past. I'm sorry if they're not very interesting to my big, hulking brute of a husband. I hate that word. Hulking? Even in kidding. Hulking, hulking, hulking. Tom calmly treads on one of the glass ornaments, crushing it underfoot. Hulk that. A tense, embarrassed silence momentarily ensues as Daisy and Tom stare one another down. Nick slowly begins picking up the remains of the shattered ornament. I should really get back to the party next door. I only meant to say hello to you, Daisy. I never even told the host I was going anywhere. Oh, yes. Yes, I suppose you'd better. We'll go, too. It's getting late. Get up, Daisy. Oh, let Daisy say goodbye to Nick for a moment, Tom. Why don't you walk me back across the lawn? Tom doesn't move. Please, Tom. I don't want to walk back all alone. Why don't you, Tom? I'll say goodbye to Nick and meet you back at the car. Well, don't take all night. No. No, I won't. Daisy turns away and busies herself fiddling with putting an ornament on the tree. It was lovely to meet you, Nick. Oh, yes. I mean, the very same to you, Miss Baker. I told you. Jordan. Jordan. It's so nice to finally be introduced to someone new here. Haven't you met anybody in New York yet? Hardly anyone. <laughs> well, at least you must know Gatsby. Gatsby? Gatsby who? A Jay Gatsby, my host at the party next door. I'll introduce you sometime, Nick. I should like that. Oh, you will. He does throw the best parties. He really does. You must have noticed. Yes. Great parties. Large parties. Large parties are my favorites. Aren't they yours? They're so intimate. There isn't any privacy at small parties. Dom. One to no one, Tom. Good night, Daisy. Take care. Good night, Jordan. Nick sees Tom and Jordan out and then turns back to Daisy. Just wonderful to see you here, Nick. Here in New York. I mean, do you know of what you remind me of? A rose. An absolute rose. You really must come see our house, and soon. I only wish I had arrived in time to join at the house for Thanksgiving. We had pie, Nick. Pumpkin pie. She crumples into Nick's arms and bursts into tears. Daisy! I'm sorry about the ornament, Nick. Tom's just like that sometimes. I'm sorry. Daisy, it, it's all right. No harm done. There is harm done, though, and I am sorry. Nothing like that should have happened. Daisy has composed herself and wipes an eye with the heel of her hand. We've been unhappy, Nick. I had no idea until tonight. No, I don't suppose you would have. We don't really know each other very well, do we, Nick? Even if we are cousins, you didn't even come to my wedding. I couldn't. I was in the war, remember? No, that's right. I forgot. Daisy gazes thoughtfully out the window beside the door. The war took a lot of good boys away from home. You know, it's sort of funny if you think about it. 
the war really wasn't so long ago, but things are very different since. I guess they are. Anyway, now that you're here, let's start over and do get to know each other better. I'd so like to. I would too. Let's plan something. What do people plan? Something for Christmas? No. No, I think not. Everyone always plans something for Christmas. There wouldn't be anything spe special about that. What about New Year's Eve? Oh, New Year's Eve is perfect, Nick. Sure. We'll have a New Year's Eve party right here at my house. What fun. And we must invite Jordan. Oh, Nick, she's a sweet girl and beautiful. I really do think you would be wonderful for each other. I don't think so, Daisy. Don't be silly. Why in the world not? Rich girls don't marry poor boys. Who's poor? I am. My father was rich. Well, don't worry. Where there's a will, there's a way. I'll figure something out. I haven't given up on the two of you yet. The blast of the car horns sound outside. That's Tom. I'd better get out there before he leaves me behind. I'll walk you to the car. Oh no, it's freezing outside. You stay right in here where it's warm. Keep thinking about ideas for our New Year's Eve party. We'll talk about it more before then. Do you have a telephone here? Oh, I have a telephone. Oh, good. Then we can talk about it more before then. Ta-ta for now. Good night, Daisy. Daisy stops and slowly turns back to Nick, an expression of melancholy on her face. You know, Nick, the shortest day of the year is coming in just a few weeks. Do you know that? Maybe. I hadn't thought about it. You always wait for the shortest day of the year and then miss it when it finally comes? I always wait for the shortest day of the year and then miss it when it finally comes. Nick stares at her blankly, unable to form a response. Daisy sighs gives him a sad smile, and takes her leave. Nick closes the door, watches the departing car through the window, waving when the horn honks again in farewell, and returns to his work on the Christmas tree. Deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 Don we now our gay apparel, fa la 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 Troll the ancient yuletide carol, fa la 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 la. An interrupting knock at the door has completed the rhythm of the musical phrase. Nick answers the door to Jordan, again coatless in the winter chill. Oh, uh, Miss Baker. Jordan, I want you to meet someone, Nick. The stranger is a handsome man, about 30 in elegant evening clothes. Nick extends his hand. How do you do? Nick Carraway. Say, your face is familiar. Were you, by any chance, in the 3rd Division during the war? Why, yes. I was in the 9th Machine Gun Battalion. I was in the 7th Infantry. I knew I'd seen you somewhere before. How long were you there? Until June. 1918? 1917. Ah, that must be why I didn't know you well. I was there until June 1918. Oh, well, how about that? But I knew I'd seen you somewhere before. Jordan tells me that you're new to Long Island. Indeed, yes. I've only just moved here this week. You must walk over and meet the gang one of these nights. Uh, yes, uh, perhaps so. It's the same people every night, you know. Only the faces are always different. To be sure. I look so forward to meeting Mr. Gadsby before long. The stranger stared him blankly. Uh, Mr. Gadsby, my new neighbor. The host at your party. I'm Gadsby, old sport. Oh, <laughs> I beg your pardon. Jay Gadsby. Nick Carraway. <laughs> I'm not a very good host. Uh, well, neither am I, old sport, but I doubt they'll notice I've slipped off. I did say tonight that I was going to introduce you. Uh, forgive me, Gadsby. I didn't realize. Look here, old sport. We're neighbors, aren't we? 
I want to tell you something about my life. I don't want you to get the wrong idea of me from all these stories you hear. Why, no. I wouldn't want that either. And I'll tell you God's truth. I am the son of some wealthy people in the Midwest, all dead now. I was born there in San Francisco, but brought up in England and educated at Oxford. A sort of a family tradition. My family all died, as I said, and I came into a good deal of money. After that, I lived like a prince in all the capitals of Europe, collecting jewels, you know, hunting big game, painting a little, anything to try and forget the terrible sorrow in my heart. Then came the war, old sport. I accepted a commission as first lieutenant when it began. I was shortly promoted to major and decorated by every allied government. Jordan suddenly jolts back into the moment with a shocked exclamation. Even Montenegro. Even Montenegro. Little Montenegro? Down on the Adriatic Sea. <laughs> Gracious. And so, in the aftermath of the war and the only life I had ever known, lost, I came back to the States to settle here on Long Island and start again. A fresh beginning in the world as it now stands. Well, I declare... And so you see, old sport, why I wanted to you to know the truth about me instead of leaving you on your own to work through all of the rumors and gossip going around. Well, I'm glad that we could set the record straight. So am I. His purpose evidently accomplished, Gatsby abruptly rises. Well, I beg your pardon, but I've left my guests for too long and must return to them. Nick rises as well and accompanies Gatsby to the door. It was very nice to have met you, Gatsby. The very same to you, and I meant what I said. Do join us one of these evenings. Well, thank you. I'll be sure to do just that. Gatsby stops on his way out the door and turns to face Nick. One more thing. Uh, what's that? Welcome to Long Island, old sport. He is gone. The instant Nick has closed the door, Jordan springs up from her seat and flies to his side. Can you believe that? Can you just believe that? I don't even know what was supposed to have just happened. He didn't give me a chance to make sure you knew the rumors or I would have told you. I don't know if I want to know a lot of the gossip about my neighbor in the first place. All I know is that most of what he just told me can't be true. At least... Not the way he told it. You're not the only one. I've heard his story told many times. Never from his own mouth before, but still many times. And it's never been the same twice. Do you mean that all that was just make-believe? I don't say that all of it was. It's just the details that don't stand up. Sometimes his family died in the air raids, and sometimes it was that awful flu from Spain that wouldn't stop. And the way he said he was born in the Midwest? But Nick, San Francisco isn't in the Midwest. It's all just so fantastic. It's so outrageous. I shouldn't have teased him about Montenegro, though. That was too obvious. I shouldn't have gone so far. But what does any of it have to do with me? He wants you to do a, a favor for him. I doubt that he needs me for anything. And I don't think I want to be involved with him at all. Well, I'm sorry, but it's a little late for that. Nick sinks down into the divan in exhaustion. Jordan sits beside him, but her outlook is energized. He didn't want to mention it to you himself, but he told me before I brought him over, and he asked me to talk with you about it for him. What is it? He's in love with Daisy. Nick freezes in horror. I'll explain it all later after you've had a chance to think about it all. But he's in love with her, and you've got to help bring them together. He stares at her helplessly. You know, Nick, Gatsby had to go back to his party, but I don't. I'm still so cold from walking across the lawn. She presses his palm to her breast. Can you tell? He can tell, all right. Nick, I think you'd be surprised by me, too. And they're in scene one. Thank God. It is now the evening of December 31st, and the time for the planned New Year's Eve party at Nick's bungalow is drawing near. Nick, 
looking dashing in a tuxedo, and Jordan, again, glittering in a drop-wasted finery, are arranging hors d'oeuvres and champagne on the coffee table. It's wrong. All she wanted was for the four of us to ring in the new year together. I never would have agreed if anything like this had been part of it then. I know that, Nick, but it's a part of it now, and believe me, it's for the best. How is it for the best? Because Daisy is the best. She ought to have something in her life. Does she want something? Everyone wants something, Nick, and everyone deserves something. Try to understand. A lot has changed for her since you were growing up together. Yes, it has. She's married to Tom now. Exactly. Tom is a good man, Jordan. But not a good husband. What are you saying? That he runs around on her? Of course not. Nothing like that. But you know what he's like, Nick. He isn't tender or sweet or warm. Didn't she know that when she married him? Unfortunately so, and she knew she shouldn't have gone through with it. Have you seen that portrait of her with Tom at their wedding with all the carnations? I've seen it. She looks happier than I've ever seen her. She was putting that on. I was with her that morning. I came in and I found her in her bedroom so drunk she could barely sit up. She'd been awake since midnight drinking almost a whole bottle of brandy. She asked me to go and tell everyone that she had changed her mind and there would be no wedding. Why? Tom had given her a pearl necklace the night before. That's disgusting. No, a real one. Terribly lovely and terribly extravagant. She later told me that it cost over a hundred thousand dollars or whatever it was, something unimaginable like that. And it scared her. She understood then how he really felt about her. That she was some beautiful trinket that he could buy and keep in a jewelry box. And she is beautiful, Nick. But she doesn't belong in that box. She knew that and still married him. It was a Manhattan Society wedding. It was too late. So we lay there in a room talking into the afternoon, and when it was time, I put her in a cold bath, and I helped her into her pink silk dress, and she wore the pearls and the carnations and became Mrs. Thomas Buchanan. Margaret Farrell, D Daisy to her family and friends, uh, hadn't been seen since. Whether she ever comes out again or not will have to be up to her, but that's why we can't keep her away from someone who really does love her. It's just like that old song. She's just a, a, a golden jailbird. Is that how it goes? I don't know, Nick. I was drunk when I heard it. Thank 
a knock is heard at the front door. That must be Gadsby. It's about time. Tom and Daisy will be here any minute now, too. They answer the door. Nick was right. It is Gadsby, dressed for the formal party, with a floral arrangement in one hand and a bottle of champagne in the other. Hurry, get in here. She grabs the flowers and the champagne from Gatsby. The flowers will work, but what is this, champagne? Hmm, no, we want, we want everything to look natural, and Nick is too poor to serve the champagne you drink. Come on, come on. She seats them for the last minute strategy review. All right, boys, here's the plan. When they arrive, Jay, you stand here so that Tom doesn't see from the door that you're anywhere else inside. As soon as you open the door, Nick, you pull Daisy inside and start taking her coat, and I'll squeeze out with Tom and tell him I'm thinking of buying a new roadster and ask him to show me his car. While I have him outside talking to me, and he thinks you're inside talking to Daisy, Nick, really, you'll be inside talking to Jay Daisy. Jay and Nick, yeah, you just try to help. God, it would really be better if I could be the one in here with Daisy during the profession of love, but it will just have to be you, Nick. Tom would never believe that you had enough money to consider buying your own car. Anyway, I'll keep him busy as long as I can, and Jay, you talk as fast as you can, and when I get back inside, we'll go from there. Any questions? Who are you? Jane Austen? Oh, no, thank God. Frigid old maid. Gatsby stands and heads for the door. I'm going home. Jordan pursues. <laughs> no, you're not. I am. Why? They're not coming. I can't wait all night. Don't be silly. It, it, it's still early. They would be here by now if they were going to come. There's another knock at the door. Jordan forcibly seats Gatsby on the divan. They are here. Now be quiet. Don't let them hear you. Nick, step lively. Nick and Jordan answer the door together. As expected, it is Tom and Daisy checked out in evening wear. Tom has brought a host gift of a bottle again. Happy New Year! Jordan takes Daisy's hands and pulls her into the house and closes the door. Nothing in the way of an entry for Tom has been arranged. Well, Happy New Year to you, Daisy. Jordan mechanically strips Daisy of her coat and hands it to Nick. My, 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 what a lovely dress. Excuse me, I need to speak to Tom about a car I haven't bought. <laughs> Jordan goes outside, closing the door behind her. What's the matter with her? <sighs> she drinks, Daisy. Uh, come in. Nick stays at the door as Daisy proceeds into the seating area. She freezes at Gatsby as Gatsby rises. Daisy. Yay. You've already met. Perhaps I never mentioned that. No, I don't think you did. We haven't met for a long time. Three years this summer. Shall we sit down? Yes, let's do. Gatsby sits on the couch and Daisy in the matching wingback chair. Nick is forced to join Gatsby on the couch, seated between the two. Champagne? Please. Nick pours a glass of champagne for Daisy, which she holds, holds without drinking. Um, Gatsby? Not right now, old spark. All right. Um, lemon cakes, anyone? No, thank you. Daisy? I feel right now as though I will never eat anything again for the rest of my life. However, truly long that might turn out to be. Uh, oh well, they're on the table if anyone changes their mind. Thank you. They look delicious. Nick rises. I think I'll step out and check on Tom and Jordan. I wish you'd stay, old sport. So do I, Nick. I think I've done enough. You're involved now, Nick. Have a seat. Nick sits. Why, Daisy? Why what? Why did you get married? Because you left. I was in the war. I couldn't wait forever. You promised that you would. All of the girls promised that in those days. Gatsby leaps to his feet, impassioned. Damn it, Daisy. I love you. So does she. And I love you, Jay. You know I did then, and I still do. And why didn't you keep your promise? You know why, Jay. 
Don't make me say it. I don't want to say it. I want you to. Please, Jay. Why didn't you wait? Because rich girls don't marry poor boys. They didn't before the war, and they don't now. Gatsby takes Daisy in his arms, and she rests her head on his chest. I'm not poor now. I know. And people think I came by it respectably. I know that, too. Anything can happen now that we've slid over this bridge. Anything at all. They kiss passionately. If this is love in the 20s, the 30s are going to be a nightmare. Tom and Jordan enter. His hands are covered in suit, and she carries his open bottle of liquor. Well, you'll be fine as long as you don't try to do over 20 or 30 miles an hour, or anything really crazy like that, actually. Tom, I'd like for you to meet Jay Gatsby. How do you do, old sport? Jay and I were lovers before the war. Jordan turns to Nick. Did you know this? A lot happened. I'll, t I'll tell you later. How could you just blurt that out? Well, I see no reason why he shouldn't know. Are you sure that's what you want? Yes, of course. I suppose you're right. Gatsby turns valiantly to Tom. I wish there were an easier way to say it, old sport, but I might as well break it to you plainly. Your wife doesn't love you. She's never loved you. She loves me. You must be crazy. It's true. She only married you because I was poor and she was tired of waiting for me. It was a terrible mistake, but in her heart, she never loved anyone except for me. What's been going on? I want to hear all about it. I told you what's been going on. It's been going on since before the war. And you didn't know. 
You've been seeing this fellow since before the war, and I had no idea. We couldn't meet, but both of us loved each other all the time, old sport. I used to laugh sometimes to think that you weren't even aware. Well, <clears throat> I can't speak about uh, what happened before the war, because I didn't know Daisy then. And anyone's guess is as good as mine as to how you ever got within a mile of her back then, unless you brought the groceries to her back door. As for now, what is it to me if Mr. Nobody from nowhere makes love to my wife? It doesn't take her love away from me. There's no real love between you. Of course he loves me, as I love her. Why, there are things between days and me that you'll never know with anybody. Things we could never forget if we wanted to. Daisy, it's all out in the open now. Just tell him the truth, that you've never loved him. Of course I did, and I do. He's my husband, Jay, but I love you, too. You love me, too. Well, why not? Tom has another sweetheart. I want to talk to you alone, Daisy. Even alone, I can't say I don't love Tom. It still wouldn't be true. Of course it wouldn't. Daisy places her hand on Tom's arm possessively. I've told you that I love you, Jay. If you love me back, that should be enough. If you want to be my only love, you want too much. I'm sorry. Did you think that she was going to, to leave me for you? Gatsby turns away in defeat and approaches Nick. Will you walk me out, old sport? Nick nods compassionately, puts an arm around Gatsby's shoulder, and heads for the door with him as the others look on in silence. Well, goodbye. I'll, I'll call you up. You don't have to. Gatsby starts out the door and turns back to put his hand on Nick's shoulder and leans in intimately. Get away from New York, old sport. We're a rotten crowd. You're worth a whole damned bunch of us put together. He's gone. Jordan crosses to Nick and puts her arm around him, comforting. We're going to go, too. Do whatever you want, Tom. Still haven't seen the house, Nick. You really must come out to visit us sometime. I'm not going to. Now, don't be that way. I'll be any way I want to. Nick, please. You're both terrible people. You smash up things and destroy everyone else's lives. And then you hide in your money or your selfishness or whatever it is that's keeping you two together and leave other people to clean up the mess you've made. Go to hell, Nick. We're too old to lie to ourselves and call it honor. Tom stalks out. As Daisy moves to follow him, Jordan catches her by the arm. Daisy, how can I help you? It's not for you to help everyone else in the world, Jordan. I've made my choices, and I don't need your judgment or your pity. I hope you'll never find out for yourself, but in case you do, just remember, a bird in a gilded cage isn't such a terrible thing to be. Jordan closes the door behind her. A bird in a gilded cage. That's what it was. The clock on the mantel begins striking midnight. Nick leans his back against the door and laughs, wryly, sliding down to a seated position on the floor. Jordan joins him, bringing the plate of lemon cake with her for them to graze. What can you find to laugh about? It's midnight. Happy New Year. It's also... Happy birthday for me. January 1st? I just turned 30. Then it really is a new year. It's the 1st of January, 1921. And this is what the world is like. I wonder how life will be 100 years from now. What does it possibly matter, Nick? We won't be there. But we're here now. So let's be here together. 
she puts her arm around him and begins to sing, inviting him to sing with her. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all acquaintance be forgot and days of all lang? Jordan cuts off Nick's singing with a kiss. He reciprocates and gestures for the audience to get the hell out of here. <laughs> Thank you.